Lesson 10 Spiritualism Exposed Sabbath Afternoon June 1 The belief in communion with the dead is still held even in professedly Christian lands. Under the name of spiritualism, the practice of communicating with beings claiming to be the spirits of the departed has become widespread. It is calculated to take hold of the sympathies of those who have laid their loved ones in the grave. Spiritual beings sometimes appear to persons in the form of their deceased friends and relate incidents connected with their lives and perform acts which they performed while living. In this way, they lead men to believe that their dead friends are angels hovering over them and communicating with them. Those who thus assume to be the spirits of the departed are regarded with a certain idolatry, and with many, their word has greater weight than the word of God. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 684. It is an undeniable fact that the hope of immortal blessedness at death has led to a widespread neglect of the Bible doctrine of the resurrection. This tendency was remarked by Dr. Adam Clark, who said, the doctrine of the resurrection appears to have been thought of much more consequence among the primitive Christians than it is now. How is this? The apostles were continually insisting on it and exciting the followers of God to diligence, obedience, and cheerfulness through it, and their successors in the present day seldom mention it. So apostles preached, and so primitive Christians believed. So we preach, and so our hearers believe. Commentary Remarks on 1 Corinthians chapter 15, paragraph 3. When about to leave his disciples, Jesus did not tell them that they would soon come to him. I go to prepare a place for you, he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. And Paul points his brethren to the future coming of the Lord when the fetters of the tomb shall be broken and the dead in Christ shall be raised to eternal life. The Great Controversy, pages 547 and 548. Christ claims all those as his who have believed in his name. The vitalizing power of the Spirit of Christ dwelling in the mortal body binds every believing soul to Jesus Christ. Those who believe in Jesus are sacred to his heart, for their life is hid with Christ in God. The command will come from the life giver, Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19. The life giver will call up his purchased possession in the first resurrection, and until that triumphant hour, when the last trump shall sound and the vast army shall come forth to eternal victory, every sleeping saint will be kept in safety and will be guarded as a precious jewel who is known to God by name by the power of the Savior that dwelt in them while living, and because they were partakers of the divine nature, they are brought forth from the dead. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 271. Sunday, June 2. The Deadly Consequences of Spiritualism the mysterious wrapping with which modern spiritualism began was not the result of human trickery or cunning, but the direct work of evil angels who thus introduced one of the most successful of soul-destroying delusions. Many will be ensnared through the belief that spiritualism is a merely human imposture. When brought face to face with manifestations which they can but regard as supernatural, they will be deceived and will be led to accept them as the great power of God. These persons overlook the testimony of the scriptures concerning the wonders wrought by Satan and his agents. It was by satanic aid that Pharaoh's magicians were enabled to counterfeit the work of God. The Apostle John, describing the miracle-working power that will be manifested in the last days, declares, He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do. Revelation chapter 13, verses 13 and 14. No mere impostures are here brought to view. 
Men are deceived by the miracles which Satan's agents have power to do, not which they pretend to do. The Story of Redemption, pages 394 and 395. Says the prophet Isaiah, When they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Isaiah chapter 8 verses 19 and 20. If men had been willing to receive the truth so plainly stated in the scriptures that the dead know not anything, they would see in the claims and manifestations of spiritualism the working of Satan with power and signs and lying wonders. The Story of Redemption, page 397. The saints must understand the state of the dead, for the spirits of devils will yet appear to them, professing to be beloved relatives or friends who will declare to them unscriptural doctrines. They will do all in their power to excite sympathy and will work miracles before them to confirm what they declare. The people of God must be prepared to withstand these spirits with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything, and that they who thus appear are the spirits of devils. We must examine well the foundation of our hope, for we shall have to give a reason for it from the scriptures. This delusion will spread, and we shall have to contend with it face to face, and unless we are prepared for it, we shall be ensnared and overcome. But if we do what we can on our part to be ready for the conflict that is just before us, God will do His part, and His all-powerful arm will protect us. He would sooner send every angel out of glory to make a hedge about faithful souls than have them deceived and led away by the lying wonders of Satan. Early Writings, page 262. Monday, June 3. Death in the Old Testament. Nowhere in the sacred scriptures is found the statement that the righteous go to their reward or the wicked to their punishment at death. The patriarchs and prophets have left no such assurance. Christ and his apostles have given no hint of it. The Bible clearly teaches that the dead do not go immediately to heaven. They are represented as sleeping until the resurrection. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 and Job chapter 14 verses 10 to 12. In the very day when the silver cord is loosed and the golden bowl broken, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 6, man's thoughts perish. They that go down to the grave are in silence. They know no more of anything that is done under the sun. Job chapter 14 verse 21. Blessed rest for the weary righteous. Time, be it long or short, is but a moment to them. They sleep. They are awakened by the trump of God to a glorious immortality. As they are called forth from their deep slumber, they begin to think just where they ceased. The last sensation was the pang of death, the last thought that they were falling beneath the power of the grave. When they arise from the tomb, their first glad thought will be echoed in the triumphal shout, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The Great Controversy, page 549. Christ became one with humanity that humanity might become one in spirit and life with him. By virtue of this union and obedience to the word of God, his life becomes their life. He says to the penitent, I am the resurrection and the life. Death is looked upon by Christ as sleep, silence, darkness, sleep. He speaks of it as if it were of little moment. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, he says, shall never die. And to the believing one, death is but a small matter. With him to die is but to sleep. The same power that raised Christ from the dead will raise his church and glorify it with Christ as his bride, above all principalities, above all powers, above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the heavenly courts, the world above. The victory of the sleeping saints will be glorious on the morning of the resurrection. My Life Today, page 295. The voice that cried from the cross, It is finished, was heard among the dead, 
It pierced the walls of sepulchres and summoned the sleepers to arise. Thus will it be when the voice of Christ shall be heard from heaven. That voice will penetrate the graves and unbar the tombs, and the dead in Christ shall arise. At the Savior's resurrection a few graves were opened, but at his second coming all the precious dead shall hear his voice and shall come forth to glorious immortal life. The Desire of Ages, page 787. Tuesday, June 4. Death in the New Testament. As Paul's epistle was opened and read, great joy and consolation was brought to the church by the words revealing the true state of the dead. Paul showed that those living when Christ should come would not go to meet their Lord in advance of those who had fallen asleep in Jesus. The voice of the archangel and the trump of God would reach the sleeping ones, and the dead in Christ should rise first before the touch of immortality should be given to the living. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The hope and joy that this assurance brought to the young church at Thessalonica can scarcely be appreciated by us. They believed and cherished the letter sent to them by their father in the gospel, and their hearts went out in love to him. He had told them these things before, but at that time their minds were striving to grasp doctrines that seemed new and strange, and it is not surprising that the force of some points had not been vividly impressed on their minds. But they were hungering for truth, and Paul's epistle gave them new hope and strength, and a firmer faith in, and a deeper affection for, the one who through his death had brought life and immortality to light. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 258 and 259. With convincing power, the Apostle Paul set forth the great truth of the resurrection. If there be no resurrection of the dead, he argued, then is Christ not risen, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. The Acts of the Apostles, page 320. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him, Paul wrote. Many interpret this passage to mean that the sleeping ones will be brought with Christ from heaven. But Paul meant that as Christ was raised from the dead, so God will call the sleeping saints from their graves and take them with him to heaven. Precious consolation, glorious hope, not only to the church of Thessalonica, but to all Christians wherever they may be. The Acts of the Apostles, page 259. Wednesday, June 5. Spiritualism in the Last Days, Part 1. Modern spiritualism is but a revival in a new form of the witchcraft and demon worship that God condemned and prohibited of old. It is foretold in the scriptures which declare that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Paul, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, points to the special working of Satan in spiritualism as an event to take place immediately before the second advent of Christ. Speaking of Christ's second coming, he declares that it is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. 
and Peter, describing the dangers to which the church was to be exposed in the last days, says that as there were false prophets who led Israel into sin, so there will be false teachers who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Here, the apostle has pointed out one of the marked characteristics of spiritualist teachers. They refuse to acknowledge Christ as the Son of God. Spiritualism, by denying Christ, denies both the Father and the Son, and the Bible pronounces it the manifestation of Antichrist. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 686. To us, as to Peter, the word is spoken, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. Thank God we are not left alone. He who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, John chapter 3, verse 16, will not desert us in the battle with the adversary of God and man. Behold, he says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Live in contact with the living Christ, and he will hold you firmly by a hand that will never let go. Know and believe the love that God has to us, and you are secure. That love is a fortress impregnable to all the delusions and assaults of Satan. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 119. Those who oppose the teachings of spiritualism are assailing not men alone, but Satan and his angels. They have entered upon a contest against principalities and powers and wicked spirits in high places. Satan will not yield one inch of ground except as he is driven back by the power of heavenly messengers. The people of God should be able to meet him, as did our Savior, with the words, It is written. Satan can quote scripture now as in the days of Christ, and he will pervert its teachings to sustain his delusions. But the plain statements of the Bible will furnish weapons powerful in every conflict. The Story of Redemption, page 397. Thursday, June 6. Spiritualism in the Last Days, Part 2. Some poor souls who have been fascinated with the eloquent words of the teachers of spiritualism and have yielded to its influence, afterward find out its deadly character and would renounce and flee from it, but cannot. Satan holds them by his power and is not willing to let them go free. The only way for such poor souls to overcome Satan is to discern between pure Bible truth and fables. As they acknowledge the claims of truth, they place themselves where they can be helped. They should entreat those who have had a religious experience and who have faith in the promises of God to plead with the mighty Deliverer in their behalf. It will be a close conflict. Satan will reinforce his evil angels who have controlled these persons. But if the saints of God, with deep humility, fast and pray, their prayers will prevail. Jesus will commission holy angels to resist Satan, and he will be driven back and his power broken from off of the afflicted ones. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 343. The experience of the past will be repeated. In the future, Satan's superstitions will assume new forms. Errors will be presented in a pleasing and flattering manner. False theories, clothed with garments of light, will be presented to God's people. Thus Satan will try to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Most seducing influences will be exerted. Minds will be hypnotized. He will employ the power of mind over mind to carry out his designs. The most sorrowful thought of all is that under his deceptive influence, men will have a form of godliness without having a real connection with God. I say to all, be on your guard, 
For as an angel of light, Satan is walking in every assembly of Christian workers and in every church, trying to win the members to his side. I am bidden to give to the people of God the warning, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Testimonies for the Church, volume 8, pages 293 and 294. Satan is not permitted to counterfeit the manner of Christ's advent. The Savior has warned his people against deception upon this point and has clearly foretold the manner of his second coming. For as the light cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew chapter 24 verse 27. This coming there is no possibility of counterfeiting. It will be universally known, witnessed by the whole world. Are the people of God now so firmly established upon his word that they would not yield to the evidence of their senses? Would they, in such a crisis, cling to the Bible and the Bible only? Satan will, if possible, prevent them from obtaining a preparation to stand in that day. He will so arrange affairs as to hedge up their way, entangle them with earthly treasures, cause them to carry a heavy wearisome burden, that their hearts may be overcharged with the cares of this life, and the day of trial may come upon them as a thief. The Great Controversy, page 625. For further reading, This Day with God, Beware of the Occult, page 247, and Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, Not Judging, But Doing, pages 139 and 140.